everyone, thanks for joining us for another episode of Zoo School. Today's video is gonna look a little bit different because it was actually created by our graphic designer, Brett, in his home studio. Brett works with another designer, Asad, to create all of the uh, graphics or signs that you see as you walk through the zoo. And it, not only do they design them, they actually build them as well. So something like this takes a lot of time and a lot of creativity. And I think you'll see that during this video because Brett's also pretty funny too. Do you want to know about being a graphic designer at the zoo? Because I do that. I can tell you. Or show you. Okay. I should mention that I'm working from home right now. If I were working at the zoo, I'd be wearing a mask. Check it out. We create all kinds of graphics at the zoo, and a lot of work goes into each one. From the colors and fonts that we use to what kind of screws to buy to install them. We don't just design and print the graphics, we build them too, and install them. We don't like things to look careless or sloppy when they're done. There's Asad. He's a pretty awesome designer. And he's a good cook. Sometimes graphics aren't just printed signs, sometimes they're made from all different materials, like letters cut out of metal. One thing you have to be sure of though is that the materials you use won't fall apart out in the weather. It helps to make a drawing of the spot where a new graphic will go and take really careful measurements. You don't want to find out at the last minute that your sign is the wrong size. Usually the steps I like to take are get measurements, make drawings, finalize a plan, and then put everything together. You can't be lazy about the details. You have to do every step right to get a result that you're happy with. Well, I'm a really amazing artist. Um, I went to college to study visual art and graphic design just kind of ended up being a practical way to turn visual art into a career. I'm pretty serious at work. But I guess the fun part of my job would be, like any job, I think, just the, the interactions with the people I work with which I'm not very good at. But on the days that I am, it's pretty fun. Thirty-six. So if you're younger than thirty-six and you're not sure what you want to do for a career, don't worry about it. You got plenty of time to try a bunch of stuff and figure it out. If you're older than that, if you're like 40, then um, tape measure, because I mean, a tape measure can answer so many questions like, um, are you sure that's going to fit? Yes, I measured. Or how much is that going to cost? 72 bucks. I measured. Is time travel possible? No, I measured. So yeah, it's a pretty valuable tool. And I can't think of any job I've done in like the past 15, 20 years where I haven't used a tape measure.
volunteering is a great way to learn things. When I was a teenager, I volunteered at my local uh, community theater and I did a lot of stuff working behind the scenes and I learned to build, paint, use tools, all kinds of stuff. No matter what you do though, put everything into it. Don't ever think that the work you're doing is beneath you or um, it's a waste of time. If you put your heart into it, you'll get something out of it. No. My funny bone. Oh. Start by paying attention to things. All the stuff you see around you, advertisements, um, signs, movie credits, grocery store signs, all that stuff was made by someone. And when you look at it, just think about that and why it looks the way it looks. When you start to think that way, um, you'll start to notice a lot. Um, all right, that's it. Hope you had fun and I hope you learned something. Bye. And now, Red is going to show you how he creates an ID card for our animals. And for your zoo school challenge today, we would love for you to make one for a wild animal, a pet, or even a member of your family. This could be a really fun one, so please be sure to tell us about it in the comments. So one of the more common things we do at the zoo is make identification graphics for the animals. These are the signs that tell you um, what the animal's name is, where they live, what they eat, a picture of them so you can see what they look like. Um, we do a lot of those because every animal at the zoo has an ID graphic. Um, so I can show you how to put together one of those now, or at least how we do it at the zoo. All right, check it out. So we'll start off with a color. We'll use green since this is for our rainforest exhibit and we'll add this leaf up in the corner. At the bottom we'll create an area for our fun fact which we'll add later. We'll need a photo. You want to choose something that gives a good representation of what the animal looks like. This one is clearly the best. Um, let's just take it into Photoshop though and get rid of the background because some of that activity in the background might be a little distracting. There we go. Now we've got our photo. That looks great. Let's add the animal's common name. Yellow banded. Poison dart frog. Under that, other animals that dart frogs are related to. Okay. Next, describe what dart frogs eat. We also use an icon so that people can know what the animal eats, even if they don't want to read the text. Now we'll describe their social group. We have icons for this too. These frogs uh, spend most of their time alone, so we'll use the icon for solitary. Now we'll add the fun fact. And that's it. Our ID graphic is complete. It's beautiful. I like to create a style guide with fonts, colors, textures, and patterns that we use for this ID. So when we create other graphics in the same exhibit, they can all look consistent. So that's it. That's how we make an ID. Now someday when you have your own zoo, you'll know how to make one yourself for all the animals you have at your zoo. As you can see, art is everywhere at the zoo. We hope you enjoyed Zoo School today, and we'll see you next time.